So I'm Quinn Curtis, I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah, and had an amazing experience today at Satoma's workshop and just kind of blew my mind off of beliefs I've had about money and um, creating prosperity for my family and my life, and I, I've loved it so much. If you have a huge, huge container, it will get filled. If you grow you to be massive, it will get filled. If you're tiny and small and you're thinking and you're paranoid about money, it's not going to come. My name is Satemangali, and five years ago, my wife and I were married. We built our first home. It was our dream home. We designed the home, we bought the lot, and we were so excited about having our very first home. Of course, we didn't have any furniture when we moved in, but it didn't matter. We had each other, and we began to furnish our home. This place would be a special home. Our first son was born. We had many family parties. Our very first Thanksgiving as a family, our very first Christmas, we even celebrated my son's first birthday party. Life was incredible. But you know, life has a way of throwing loops into your plans. And when the economy turned in 2007, my business plummeted. I lost everything. And with everything, we had a foreclosure notice. My family came over three days before Thanksgiving in 2008 and packed us up and we moved. We were kicked out of our home by the bank. The cars that I once drove were all repossessed. This was embarrassing, even humiliating. This was the last car we owned, my Cadillac Escalade, and I'm vacuuming it before the repo man comes to pick it up. And people ask me, how did you get through this time? Well, we sold everything. We began to sell our couches, all of our beds, my guitars, my keyboards, even this love sack. What's, what's the wedding gift? I was very embarrassed, very discouraged. But there's one thing that drove me to get up every single day. It was my boys, my wife. You know, in the army, in the military, they say that the people who they know for sure will make it the longest are those who have an abiding faith and a higher power or family. And there were days when I would drive home from the office just utterly depressed. But I knew every time I walked through the door, my son would run to greet me. So happy to see him. This was a driving motivating factor, even inspiring to me, to know that I had this young boy who just loved me and looked up to me. It was challenging for us. How's your day today? You know, when you lose everything, you lose your confidence. And I knew that I needed to gain that confidence back. So I went back to the gym and took control of something that I had immediate control over, my body. I played ball at BYU. I also played ball at the New England Patriots. We won a Super Bowl. And I knew that by getting in the gym and getting those endorphins up and just feeling good about staying committed to what I wanted to obtain, which was health, the confidence would come back. You know, it's like they say, if you look good, you feel good. If you feel good, you play good. And if you play good, you get paid good. And when you get paid good, you live good. Or whatever. It's possible. And I'm going to show you how. Once I catch my breath. I gain a lot of weight. Some people get skinny when they get depressed. I ate. So I started at 300 pounds and I took 50 pounds off. I wanted to get the confidence back. I wanted to get some small victories in my life. Say hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Welcome to my home. You know, there's nothing better than family and having those closest to you. Right next to you to stand by you in the hardest times. Oh, I love, love hanging out with my son. Get out of the comfort zone. If you're not providing value for people, you're not making money. Because dollars follow value. 
And I went back to providing value, and communicating value, and distributing value for people. Creating value means that you make a difference in people's lives. You provide them something that they value, that will inspire them, and just add incredible value to every part of their lives. Roles, I want you to raise your hand and say, I'm committed. I love it. Okay, you're all in. Kelly Hinckley, I'm from Riverton, Utah, and I found this class to be very inspirational and goal setting, and I think everybody should do it. <laughs> Come here, and I'm going to do it again. I've been part of a band for seven years, and one thing I've learned in the band is that making money is like making music. You learn how to do it. It's learnable. Right? The more you practice, the better you get. And a lot of entrepreneurs are scared of making mistakes. You know, I'm scared to put a blog up. I'm scared to do a capture page or a video. And the fact is, if you're not making mistakes, it means you're not doing. If you're not doing, you're, you'll never get the results that you truly want. So treat your business like music. Just jump in and, and start learning. If you've traveled the country playing in front of thousands and thousands of people. And the band's been something that I've been very passionate about. I love making music. I love like hearing the Ivories playing reggae music and R&B. Find something you're passionate about that can be a good release for you. It'd be so good for you, so healthy for you. We all have gifts and talents. We just need to increase them. Now, I met Kimball Roundy, Spider-Man, Spider-Web Marketing in the gym. And he agreed to help me with my internet marketing skills and I agreed to help him with his muscles. Obviously he didn't need any help because as you can see there, he's just a beast. Now, I truly believe in having mentors, teachers, people that can take you by the hand and walk you around those pitfalls, decrease the learning curve. Obviously you're still going to have to, to do and become, but if you don't have mentors in your life right now, you're, you're going to struggle. I don't know what Kimball had in mind when he decided to grow his hair out for this event. It almost looks like a wig. Uh, he lost a bet, so as you can see, he had to cut it. And, and he still thinks he looks pretty good. But this is one of my mentors, and I mentor him. And, and, and you find a way to, to learn from everyone that you're around. That's one of the keys to life. You know, I heard the story of a man who said he dropped his son off at college. And his son looked at him. Whoa. And he almost gave him a look like, who are you? There was no way I was going to let this happen. So I love to do the things that I do because it gives me the opportunity to be with my boys, with my wife, as often as I can. Sure, I could go out and get a job and work 50, 60, 70 hours, but where does that leave me? No one on their deathbed wishes they spent more time at the office. No one wishes they sat in front of the computer more, writing blog after blog or making hundreds of thousands of dollars. You always look back and think, what about the relationship that I had? In fact, the biggest regrets in life are the things that we don't do, the relationships that we never mended. I tell people to live now, live in the moment. Stop texting when you're talking with people. Quit checking your Facebook status and just enjoy your everyday life. That's what this is about. And you can't quit. You can't quit. You can't give up when the economy throws you lemons. Don't just make lemonade. I mean, create lemon stores. I have two sons right now. I'm a pride and joy. And every day I come home and I know that I've given my very best to not only provide, to Come teach here, them man. the value of Come hard here, work, <laughs> of providing value, oh. making a difference in other people's lives. That's what this life is about, leaving this world a better place, making the people around us better, becoming a true creator. I know that I won't regret the life that I live because I'm living it and I'm loving it. Let's go get your life back. I'd love to show you how to do that.